Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today, JC Gaspar, Jessica Shire, and I have teamed up for a card sketch video hop. We thought it would be fun to each take the same sketch and put our own twist on it. So we've got uh, three different cards in three different videos, and I hope you will hop along with us for some fun inspiration. I love working with sketches because they're a great way to inspire you when you're not sure what, what to do. For my card, I started out with a white card base, and then I've got a piece of craft cardstock cut to an A2 size, and a piece of white cardstock as well. I've got this cute little flamingo from this Pink and Main set. I'm going to use the Warm Wishes to create my own pattern paper. And then I've already gone ahead and die cut some leaves and flowers from two Tim Holtz sets, and I've got links to those down below, as well as that Pink and Main set. Um, and then to mimic the stitching that's on the card, instead of using real thread, I wanted to just use a stitched hillside border to cut it out and kind of give me some faux stitching. So the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, make my pattern paper. If you have a, a pre-printed piece of pattern paper that works for the, the same colors that you're looking for, by all means go ahead and use that. This took me about 10 minutes, so if you have pre-printed uh, pattern paper that'll save you a few minutes. What I did was I just grabbed the uh, Warm Wishes stamp and I lined it up in my Misty. I wanted to make sure that it was straight across and I also was careful to put my paper in where it's um, on on those grid lines on the on the paper um, kind of in the middle and also that stamp is sort of a neutral position so that I can move the paper side to side and up and down um, and try to reach everywhere in there. Um, at one point I will end up moving my stamp for just the last two pieces that I, I couldn't get without getting into the crease, but um, for the most part I, I stamped everything um, with the stamp in this one position. And I just went ahead and moved the cardstock up and over two squares at a time, and that worked perfectly for this sentiment. Um, I switched up the colors, I did kind of the reds and pinks at the top, and then greens on the, the bottom half. And I was making sure to clean my stamp before I would go from a dark to a light color. I'm using Distress Oxide, so it's not a problem if you go from uh, a light ink to a darker one. But you don't want to contaminate your pad with a, a dark color on a light pad. And then do be sure before you change major color families to, um, to clean it, like from red to green. So I, I did this, and like I said, it took me about 10 minutes. It was pretty easy, and then this is where I had to move my stamp for the last two little pieces. But I made my own pattern paper, and it matches the flamingo perfectly, which I thought was fun. And then the next step is to go ahead and die cut it. So I wanted to use that stitched hillside border, and I, go, I went ahead and I lined up the craft paper and the pattern paper at the same time, and I'm going to cut them both at the same time. These are um, 80 pound, and so it's thin enough that I can cut through both at the same time. By cutting the, um, the craft piece as well, when I uh, stick the two together, I get more of an inlaid look rather than the white paper on top of the brown, and then you have kind of a bump. Um, just having them inlaid and, and matching right next to each other gives you one flat smooth surface and kind of lends itself more to that stitched feel. So I went ahead and glued those down to my card front. And this is PVA glue in a fine line bottle. This is my preferred uh, glue for gluing paper to paper. I use about one, I think it's an eight ounce bottle of PVA glue and I, I I think I buy one bottle a year or so, so it lasts for quite a long time. I like having the wiggle room that I get by using wet glue, and it holds up really well. I've had some of my old card samples fall apart using the um, the tape runners, um, just you know, ones that were in my sample box. After a while, started to to come apart using that old stuff, so I, I've switched over to the PVA, and I just keep refilling that fine line bottle. So. If you're looking for a new adhesive, that's my recommendation. After I get the two pieces glued onto the card, I'll bring out all of my little die cut pieces. Now those I just die cut from two colors of green cardstock, and you can add details if you want to with a marker, but I knew I'd be layering everything up, and I really want that flamingo to be the star of the show, so I didn't add any extra detail to those leaves. Um, I just kind of figured out where I wanted them to be 
and then I can come back in with that PVA glue and glue them down. I am overlapping the leaves and I'm letting them hang off the edges. I'll trim those away at the end, but it, it kind of fills up the scene a little bit more if they go off the edge. And also when I'm gluing them down, I'm not worrying about getting the glue all the way 100% out to the edges of every leaf. If they kind of stick up a little bit, it'll give the, the card a little more texture. So um, I like that. Then I went ahead and added some foam tape to the flamingo and popped it up. Again, I want it to kind of be the focal point there, so it's going to live on top. Now I do have these three little white flowers that I cut out. Those are also in that, that tropical die set. Um, I knew I didn't want them to be white. Um, I figured I would use the, the pinks and reds that I used in my uh, flamingo there. And if you want, you can cut them out of colored cardstock, but the, that one die cuts out all three flowers at the same time. And I like cutting these out of white cardstock so that I can add the color myself. Um, oftentimes I'll use a piece of tape upside down and I'll just kind of stick tiny pieces to it and color them all at once, but I was in a hurry. This is quick. Um, so I just held them in my fingers. <laughs> um, I did try to use two colors for each one though. The, I just added a little darker color to the center. And then I added a little bit of body, kind of curled the petals up a little bit just by kind of smushing them into the palm of my hand that forces the edges of the petals to stick up a little bit. It's quick and easy and it, it's one of those little things that it, it's noticeable. Even though they will sort of flatten out, especially in the male, they will have a little more volume. They, they will want to stick up a little bit more. So I, I usually do this with flowers. And then when I was sticking them down with my fingers here, I'm, I'm just gluing them in place, but it my fingers are a little bit big to stick these tiny ones down. So I just grabbed a ball tip stylus and kind of pushed them down in the center there. And that also helped to kind of pop up those petals a little bit more. I think it's a nice little accent here. So I decided at this point that my warm wishes sentiment wasn't really acting like a sentiment. So I wanted one more sentiment to be sort of the, the focal sentiment. <laughs> Even though it's not really on the sketch, um, I decided to add it in here. Uh, another little pop of pink as well. So I grabbed a scrap of pink cardstock that was basically the right shade. I used those same Copic markers that I used on the flowers and the flamingo to kind of darken up the bottom and give me an ombre effect. And then I grabbed that Deck the Palms stamp and lined it up so that I can um, stamp it with Versamark ink. Uh, before I stamped it, I did use the powder tool just so that I won't get stray embossing powder on the paper. And then I'm using white embossing powder that I'll melt with my heat tool. And that will give me a nice raised white sentiment. And I'm going to go ahead and die cut this with an... Um, an everyday, I think they call it an everyday sentiments uh, banner die. It's from Lawn Fawn. I'll have the links for that too. And I didn't show you that at the beginning because this was a, a last minute addition. <laughs> um, so I went ahead and die cut that. I only need the fishtail on the left side. The right side I'm going to cut and put underneath the flamingo's legs. So I just kind of eyeballed where I want it to be, trimmed it down. And then I'm going to pop this up too so that it's the same height as the flamingo. So I'll just put a little more foam tape behind here. And then I can stick it in place. And forgive my head, it's in the way, but I was trying to line it up so that the edge is parallel to the bottom of the card. Now I'm going to go ahead and trim away all of the little pieces of the leaves that hang off the edges just to clean it up. And man, I really need to get a pair of these left-handed scissors. Sometimes this is hard because the blades are sort of opposite of, of where they should be. So it, it's sometimes hard for lefties to trim. <laughs> um, but I finished up that part of the card. And then the last thing that I want to do is add some gems. So I've got these little rhinestones. They're flatback gems. Um, they're really small. I think they're actually meant for decorating fingernails. Um, and they were cheap. I think I paid it like a couple bucks for that whole thing. Um, but I, I like, it has a nice variety of color in there. 
So I just went ahead and glued them in place. I'm using my jewel picker, and then this is new to me, the Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive, and it works great. So um, I'm a big fan of that now. So that kind of wraps up the card. I like the, the extra sparkle that you get there, and I really liked working with this sketch. It, it makes it easy and it, it helps give you um, kind of a launch point. So I've got uh, links below to this sketch and a library of more sketches. And if you're ready for some more inspiration, make sure you hop along with us. I've got uh, links to JC and Jessica's videos down below. And then if you're new to my channel, feel free to hit subscribe. And I've got a, a couple more videos here that kind of give you a sample of what I do on the channel here. Thanks for watching.